We've been working together, this is what, our third session of 10? Yes. So we had our consult, we've had, this is the third session. So you had a really rough week. I did. We had talked about last time going, or over the course of two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. Letting go of the body image. You you have lost a ton of weight, and you've also regained a ton of weight. How many times? Uh, I've lost a significant amount of 100 pounds twice, and, you know, probably between 10 and 50, 500 times. <laughs> okay, yeah. so you've lost a few thousand pounds. Yeah, I've lost a lot of, lost and gained a lot. Okay, so how long has it been that you've been binging? Would you say you have a, you could be diagnosed with binge eating disorder? Yes, uh, I would probably say for thirty years. Okay, and would you say that before you would have you would have agreed and supported the I'm a food addict model? Yes, I'm addicted to sugar, addicted to carbs. How much I research have you done in that area? Um, not a lot. Uh, I have been doing it for a what I hear. <laughs> oh, like most of everybody on Facebook? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my god, did you see? Like from some <laughs> Facebook post, as if that's the end all be all of uh, trustworthy information? Right. So, Not you. Me from the responsibility. Of course, it takes you out of responsibility. <laughs> it's your parents' genes. Yes. Right? It's the food. Yeah. The food is doing this to you. And would you say at this point, from the, from how much we've processed, is that anywhere close to true? No. I know. Because now you can see it differently, right? So we can look at this last yeah. week even and say you had a really rough week. Did you? How much did you binge this week? Uh, probably seven days. Seven times. Seven days. Yeah. Full, full. And is it because of the food? No. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. The yeah, food is just your, your, you're eating the food because you feel this incredible sense of need to lose weight. Right? We talked about the feelings that go into this need for body image. Correct? That when yeah. it comes to it, you have this insanely huge impulse to eat, but it is directly tied to the need to lose weight. Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. And do you feel like this week that that became obvious for you? It did. Yeah. yeah. That the every time you went to food, it was because you felt like you have failed in terms of this need to lose weight. You have failed your need to lose weight. Yeah, because when you binge, it's a moment you say, oh, my God, I ruined it. Correct? I'll fix it and it looks good because I'll later. Okay, say that again. That was breaking up. No, but I'll fix it later because I'll try again. Yeah, I'll try again. So you're – um. Would you say in terms of just eating to hunger? Because that's that's the – we're not dieting right now. We're just eating to hunger, correct? Yes, that is correct. And, uh, again, um, I, ha I still had some times where I was successful in doing that. So I uh, just – the choices were typically – when I wasn't hungry to begin with. Yes, and we talked so kind of about I those impulses. Hungry, I could stop when I was satiated, and uh, it. it was the going past like later or something. Yeah, and would you say that that's because the meaning behind eating was legitimately based on hunger? It wasn't based on some alternative need? Yes, okay. at, at the stage of hunger, absolutely. Okay, so I have another question for you. Are you imposing food religion into this, meaning you can't have certain foods? And if you do, they're bad. You're ruining something by eating them. No. You remember with uh, those those little strawberry cookies how you said, I can only have two? Yes, I was just going to reference that story again. Because yeah, because that's like, dieting. When you say, I can only have two, that's dieting. 
-hmm. Does that make sense? So you're imposing some belief system of food morality into what we're doing. So it's important that you, are you, because you have this belief around, I need to lose weight to be safe. That feeling you get when you think of that losing weight is this bizarre feeling of warm, ooey gooey, safety, lenience, um, easy going. It feels like stress is easier to take when you visualize it, right? Yes. Okay. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> it is crazy. I know because it's so real when you think of it. It's like, oh, if I lost weight, I would be so much, life would be like a frolicking, like pasture of daisies. And, and even this little stress would be, I would be able to handle this stress. It would be like, oh, no big deal, right? You're visualizing yes. what it feels like to be safe. Yes. Right? And because, yes. be, and, that, and that safety is actually the other side of uh, survival. When you don't feel safe, you have to create an environment of safety. So you're surviving. You're trying to just survive, which means I'm just trying to stay alive. Okay. That sense of life on the other side feels relaxed, confident, profound. It feels like there's wiggle room, buffer, Feels like you've got all of this leniency. There's a lack of pressure. Am I describing that illusion very well? Yes. Okay. Yes, <laughs> That's not an illusion, actually. That is the truth of when someone's out of survival. It's like all of a sudden you have room to just be yourself. The problem is this. You've attached it to being thin. As if you have to be thin first. When I'm thin, I can have it. Like this is, this is my last need to survive. If I can fulfill this need, I will be there with all the rest of the skinny people who are so easygoing. <laughs> right? Yes. That feeling is stemming from a the opposition of it, which is, I am not, um, life sucks. Um, your first statement, I had a really bad week, right? That bad, bad, yeah. bad, that feeling of it's not good. I'm not safe. I'm not, I, um, comes from, I have to be perfect. There's pressure. I have to find a, uh, I have to defend myself. I have to make sure everything is in order. I have to work. We have to focus. There's no lenience. Yeah. So you feel very unsafe right now. And 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 um any sense of safety is super fleeting. Right. And it's about to go away, right? There's this weird sense yeah. of threat as well. Yeah. Yeah. And you're blaming it on your weight. I believe I am. Okay, so Let's pretend that there is no weight loss available to you to feel safe. It's impossible. So that no longer can, you can't, uh, weight is not the solution. It's not going to be a solution. You're not going to, it's, it's not possible. Let's eliminate losing weight as a possibility, as a resolution. Tell me how that feels. So it's not, it's not a cause and it's not a solution. What happens to those feelings of my life sucks, I gotta fix this, everything's bad, I'm not safe, I need to get security and I need to have like a lot of security around me for me to feel comfortable. What happens to that feeling if your weight is not? It would be, it would be irrelevant because it would, it would be smooth because there's no end to the means. So would you, so are you saying that if you, if losing weight was not a problem or if your body fat was not included in this sense of threat, that you don't have that sense anymore? No, I would not have that sense. Okay. No. So what this tells me is that you, uh... I mean, sometimes people have a truly shitty life backing it, 
Like my husband's beating the shit out of me. Um, my parents are rejecting me. Um, I have, I've backed myself into a corner in this religion. If I leave the religion, everybody's going to shun me. So I don't have a source of income. Um, does that make any sense? It does make sense. Yeah. Absolutely, that's not me. I don't have anything like that. Oh, that's great news. Fall back on. Yeah, that's not as common, but that does exist for for some people. That if I don't, they think that by losing weight that they'll be able to tolerate their shitty life, right? The shitty, they right. they're in a bad marriage. That's not good. They are they're living with their you know, an environment that's not healthy. So what they do, because they don't feel like that's an al there's an alternative to that, is they will try to seek refuge in body image. Okay, that's what I did. Okay. So if you take a step back and you can say, well, actually, in terms of like my life, if I could erase body image, like you, let's just say going blind. I've used that in my past videos and with other people if you went blind meaning you can't even see yourself anymore what happens to your sense of insecurity and i'm going to die what happens to this sense of inadequacy that has to be fixed first it, it instantly goes away because it's again it's, it's something else that makes the problem irrelevant correct okay so what that means is that the life that you have today is awesome you actually don't have major problems you have normal problems Right. Fighting with your spouse every so often, kids that don't listen to you, um, a child that's struggling, um, a job that's got a lot of demand. I mean, you've got normal life circumstances, but they're not outside of your sense of capacity. Right. Right. However, they might feel that way now because you feel that you think that you're under fire, you're under siege, you're under attack because you're fat. Because you're fat, life, normal life circumstances feel catastrophic. Like I had a bad week, really bad. And I said to you, oh, did your child die? Did you get severe burns all over your body? And you were like, oh my God, you're right. Perspective. Well, it's very hard when you're in psychologically in the brain. It's very hard to think in perspective when you're actually in survival. Because when someone's in survival, they take something that is like a pin like this big, like a tiny little drop, like a tiny dot. To someone in survival, it feels like like a huge catastrophic thing because that's how our brain's supposed to work in survival, right. right? So it's like if I could lose weight, if I could lose weight, then this is what my life would feel like. But because I'm fat and that makes me um, worthy of rejection, like I'm a rejectable person because I'm fat, everything feels bigger. Correct? Yes. So if you, if we could erase completely the pressure for you to lose weight, meaning your body right now is good enough, it's acceptable. Like no one's, you're good. Just get rid of it from the equation. What happens to this huge amount of stress with your real life? Since it's not taking into consideration the negative aspect it becomes just normal so it goes from being hypersensitive to not such a big deal right. yeah that's symptom you're, that's a symptom your symptoms are in survival the problem is that you actually believe that by being thin you're gonna have access to that sense of oh I'm safe I'm safe right but here's the problem with this when you lose this weight, tell me how that feels when it, we go into reality of it. It felt no different. I've it feels very awful. It felt no different. As a matter of fact, it feels worse in a way because you then have to keep... You have to defend? The appearance. Yes, you have to defend your... Your safety. What, what, what was that? Yeah, it's kind of, I like to describe it like this. Once you get down to a body image that you think is safe, you have to defend yourself. You have to protect yourself. Who is the biggest threat? What is the biggest threat to your thinness? I am. 
Okay, I'm going to really want you to think about this again. So once you, so you're focused, I'm going to save myself, I'm going to free myself, I'm going to get safe, I'm going to get safe, and you're starving, 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 monitoring, obsessing over your weight, and you get down to this size, right? And you've been exercising, and you're cross-feeding, and you're, you're like low carbon, and look at me in ketosis, right? And you get down to that body, and you're like, oh my God, everybody's like, good for you, oh my God, you're so successful, we're so proud of you, right? And you're doing all of this work and obsessive compulsiveness to maintain this, right? Once you get down to the weight, what is the biggest threat to your body image? In that mentality, what is the biggest threat that would make you gain weight? The biggest threat is food. Oh, yes. Okay, so this is where things go in a vicious cycle. The reason why you can, will never be free, you'll never get that freedom of, oh, it's because food is your biggest threat. Now, notice how you go, that is so freaking true. Because now you have to be literally afraid of food. So what happens now? What are you doing with your food? The moment you realize, I have got what I want, I'm losing weight, I have safe, I have safety here. Now, what happens to the pressure around being perfect with food as you're losing? It intensifies. Okay, now, in terms of survival mechanisms, what is the number one survival need psychologically? Say that again. Safety? No. Hmm. It's food, honey. Oh. <laughs> the number one, number one psychological vulnerability all humans have is food. Wow. Okay, let me give you an example of this. Something cataclysmic happens immediately, right? Something crazy happens. There's destruction and you're going, you're trying. What's the first thing you think of in ter outside of, are you still alive? What's yeah. the first thing that Everybody comes to your mind? To oh, for what? <laughs> and then it keeps on going. Do I have seeds? Do I have a way to get food? Can I hunt? Notice how that becomes, takes, goes from here to here. All of a sudden food becomes humongous in terms of what you psychologically have to think about. Yes. yes, I know. And not only that, but it's obsessive about it. And that's how it's supposed to work. It's supposed to work that way. If we didn't have this obsession over food when it comes to actual life and death circumstances, would we be here today? No. No. The number one psychological need in terms of survival is food, period. End of story. If you have food, you have water. Because you can't have food without water. So it's food and water. Correct? Once you have food and water and you know I have a way to feed my family, I have a way to hunt, I have a way to uh, forage, right? Now you go to safety. Which is, okay, I need safety from the elements. Do I have shelter? Do I have blankets? Do I have something that will protect me from, you know, animals or, right? Yes. Once you have that secure, what's next? Okay, I need to find a group of people. I, okay, is there someone we can work with? Because if I have a group of people, which is, so in terms of hierarchy of needs, which is the first number one psychological need that you have to secure? Okay, food. And then down the path a while is I need a group of people because I'm more likely to survive if we can share all of this work. If I can get someone to go hunt and I can work on tilling the earth and I know how to sew, right? So you have all these other qualities in terms of survival, correct? So when it comes down to your issues around survival, when you lose weight, which which survival need becomes a threat? Uh, 
after you've lost your weight. Tell me, how's that feel to, to completely feel that food is the enemy? Okay, so tell me what which 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 psychological need I mean, in, in your head or in, in my head, I won't speak her, in my head. No, you're pretty much speaking for all human beings right now. So go ahead and say it. Well, I was gonna say it can't be both, except that it is both. Well, you're placing one against the other. It's you that's doing it. It's the belief right. system. Because right. you decided that being thin was the way out of this feeling um you decided being thin was what would make you feel secure. It's a decision. You decided. This is your belief system here we're talking about, not mine. It's yours, and you bought into the diet culture, which is fed off of thinness, like you're healthy when you're thin, right? Yes. So they tell you that when you're thin, Marie Osmond is sitting there going, I've lost 50 pounds and I'm so happy. <laughs> that's what yes so basically they're saying when you're thin you'll be safe right right but what does that do to the first hierarchy of need it makes it a threat you're taking it away, you're taking it away. hmm how did that work for you this week right. it did not well in terms of hierarchy of needs, where is you being thin? That's that's with social acceptance. That's a that's a vulnerability in terms of social. I'm I am rejectable because I'm fat. People will reject me because of body fat, right? So because of that, I can't eat food. Which one in terms of survival needs, your need for food psychologically is bigger than your need to be socially accepted. That's the truth. Right. So in terms of which one is going to win, even though you've made this one the most important survival need, no matter what your belief is, can it combat with your nature of food need? No. Which one's going to win? Food. No shit, right? It would for me too because okay. we're not immune to that. That's my psychological number one need is food. When can I purchase food? Do I have food in my freezer? I mean, how often do we as humans think about food if if it's 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 being threatened all the time? And you know what makes it worse is it's being withheld from you because your need to be accepted means that you can't have food. It's not that you you have access to it. You can't have access to it. Yeah, because you need to be thin so that people accept you. You really have to consider what social cult you're wanting to get approval into. Do you really want to be a part of that cult? No, I don't want to be a part of that cult. So how do you, dis how, you realize that if you leave that cult, that you're good right now, like you're safe. You have people that love you. You have this body fat. You've gained your 100 pounds. You have all this fat. And are they rejecting you? No. Mm -mm. No one's rejecting you, are they? You have a job. No. You work. Are you successful with what you do? Yes. Are they firing you because you have fat? No. No. They love what you're doing. You're trustworthy. You're acceptable. You're doing your job. You're kicking ass. You work from home. You whatever, right? Does your job provide a means for you to feed your family? Yes. Say that again. Yes. So you have a means to feed your family above and beyond, correct? I do. You have a skill set to work that is worthy of being paid for, correct? I do. So you have a social security. You're actually making money with a skill set that makes you valuable to your community. So if we actually align survival with reality, are you barely making it? Yeah. <laughs> Would you say you live in luxury? 
I do. Meaning, yeah, not only do you have access to buy food, but you could buy a year's supply right now and probably be good in your food storage. Yes. And you could get everything you need to hunt and forage. You could go get seeds. You could stock seeds. You could get everything you need. You can get a year's supply of toilet paper and soap. Not only that, but you can not only not only do you have access to food storage, but you don't have to eat your food storage to survive right now. And you have access to cultural food from around the world. So is your food under siege? Is your food being threatened? No, it's not. In fact, you have such an abundance of that number one hierarchy. That one's fulfilled, isn't it? Do you have shelter from the elements? Are you safe from, you know, because we're not actually at the top of the food chain. We're somewhere in the middle. Did you know that? The top of the food chain would be a bear. Uh, even coyotes could kill you. Um, I mean, we're not at the top of the food chain, but are you safe? Absolutely. Totally safe. Totally safe. You've got a home. You have shelter, shelter from elements. You have the clothing that you need. Do you have enough clothing to support you through the year? I do. Would you say you have above and beyond so that you could actually play with textiles and different types of fashion okay yep. do you have a family that loves you I do and they love you without condition doesn't mean you don't have your spats but it just means that they really do, they're not about to kick you out because you're fat well, okay. okay so in terms of you being safe from death would you say your hierarchy of needs are truly met I, I, absolutely beyond Okay, so this whole need to lose fat, do you, it's kind of a game, right? It's like, it's like a weird, it should be just for gain. It's a, or a, it's a game. It's not even necessary. Right. Do you see that? I do. So what would happen if you stopped putting it into a need to survive? Again, it becomes irrelevant. It's not even something to think about. Yeah, it's just ridiculous, right? A waste of your energy, uh -huh. a waste of your space. So if we get rid of that being a need, meaning you don't need it, what do you have access to this second? Uh, food, safety, and my community. Peace, calm. Remember when you were like, oh, I would... Oh, yes. Peace, calm, acceptance. All of a sudden, you all those these emotions that you thought required weight loss, what happens to those emotions that you used to think that were away from you? Where are they now? They're free. They're, they're in you. Yeah. What happens to this feeling with food that is so urgently being um, threatened? Is your food being threatened right now? No. So do you so do you need to go shove your face full of it? I don't. Mm-mm. So if you decide to go get something like um tacos this afternoon for lunch, did you ruin anything? Yeah. Those cute little biscuits with the strawberry jam in the center. You can have those anytime you yeah. want. How does this sound to you? It, it, it sounds like my life would be lighter. Well, yeah, that's what you're chasing with that thin body, right? That's what you were hoping right. you'd get when you're thin. But if you decide that's not even necessary, I don't have to be thin. In fact, I can stay fat the rest of my life. And even if there is a true survival environment, with the fat, you'll be grateful. Yes, I would be. <laughs> I know. Yeah. If we could actually go into real survival mechanisms, you'd be like, sweet, all you skinny bitches are going to die. <laughs> right? Yes. So you could look at this and say, actually, I don't have to lose weight. I have everything I need, which means there's no pressure, which means it can happen of its own accord. I need and uh, I, I, I do want it to happen 
unidentical. And how does that feel? Freeing. Doesn't it? Do you it need does. to fix the binging you've done this week? Do you have to fix that now? No. No. Here's the thing. If you decide that it has to be fixed, what happens? Then I go back into my fight or flight. And what what is your th what's the threat? The threat is that I will be executed. Say that again. The threat will be that I will be deprived of food. Hold on. Yes, of course. But when you decide I have to lose weight first, food becomes the threat. Correct. Yes. And it's inevitable, it is intrinsic, it is inherent that all of a sudden you have fear of food being a threat. Right. Can you see that's where this vicious cycle is and okay. why it's very difficult to escape it? Because you think I have to lose weight first, which means I can't eat food as bad, which inherently triggers this psychological need to get your food, so you have this obsession over food, right? But it's only there because you've decided you have to lose weight to survive. So you're placing this smaller survival against a bigger survival. And which one's going to win? And do you see how this goes in a vicious cycle? Because you're, you're trying to fight the number one psychological need that's there for survival. You're actually demonizing it. And, and, um, and so how do you feel about yourself when you have these impulses that are literally obsessive about food, you think that you're the problem. Like you have a sense, like you actually think that you are, um, you just need more self-control. Yes. <laughs> yes. Did you hear that? Yes. I say it like that because it's, stu it's stupid. You just don't have discipline. You need more discipline. Discipline against this insane nature that has kept the human species alive for millions of years. Does anybody have that capacity? And if they do, if they do, let's say you're anorexic, right? That comes because you have no life. That means your parents are doing everything for you or you're so freaking rich that you have nothing to do. So it's easy to manage your anorexia. People who are functioning adults, can't, they can't manage that. There's way too much to be done. They can't manage starvation. They have, right? You have to have your energy to support your family and to work. Yes. Correct? So what's the likelihood that this belief in being thin is going to be a bigger match than your brain's need for food to survive? It's, uh, my brain's need to survive is going to win. Always. And it doesn't make sense for you to feel like you suck. No, it's unrelated. I know. Yeah, I know, but you realize that because you place this need to lose weight, because you've placed the need to lose weight above your brain's biology to need food, you think you suck. You've actually placed the need to be thin as if it's the end all be all to your survival. You put that above your biological need for food. And your psychological evolution in terms of needing food. Mm -hmm. So with that said, once you do that, these impulses to eat foods get huge, huge, which is normal and natural. Okay. The crazy thing is the diet cult wants you to think that it's the food that makes you have those impulses. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't at all. I know. it. Doesn't it just sound a little enabling as if these people... Why, why would they do that? This is not about the food. This is about the impulses to get food to survive because you live in a belief system that says you have to have a healthy, thin body to survive first. Oh. Yeah. So you have this competition between two necessary survival needs. The one that's winning is the one that makes you think you need to lose weight even more. Do you see how this is a vicious cycle? Because if you go to binge on food out of survival needs, that makes you fat, which threatens this weird uh, worship and idolization over the thin body. So it makes the obsession over needing to be thin bigger. 
which puts even more pressure on you to starve yourself, which ultimately puts you at risk for this psychological need for food, which now creates this need to binge, which is only there because you think you'll starve so that you can be thin. So what happens if we tell you, what happens to this whole crazy, crazy matrix, right? This insane cycle between starvation and binging. If you don't have to lose weight, what happens to it? Well, uh, when you look at the circle, there are just where the line gone. Yeah, once you can't continue. It can't because what happens when you remove this need to lose weight to survive? What happens now to your um hierarchy of need with food? Is it fulfilled or not? It it is because if I remove the need to be thin for survival, uh that just means that I'm surviving. Yes, and you have the access to food. Now all of a sudden food yeah. becomes like, oh, eating that little flour, sugar, biscuit is not, I can have it any time. Right. So this, this need to starve is gone. Now here's the thing. We have this major capitalistic environment that is making trillions of dollars on making you believe that your value and your safety is in your looks. As a woman, the only thing you have is a vagina and a body. Right. So even if you're a successful woman, you're not that successful until you're thin and fit and healthy and eat the right food, right? So what's happened is we have these businesses, these in individuals who go on Facebook and have a business and want followers and they say, um, don't you know, here are five foods that you need to be afraid of. <laughs> I know it's funny. Yeah, I, I see it as it is funny. Uh, well, now that you see it as these people are using fear of food because they believe in the health model of survival. Right. As if the human body didn't survive for millions of years eating trash, garbage, or like something as simple right. as grass or your own feces, right? How many years have women right. or have humans survived off of drinking their urine? Right. Like the body can't handle this stuff? Right. Does, I know you're like, right, that's true. Eating bugs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And um, yes, eating bark or drinking right. um, water and having disease and severe nutritional deficiencies. How did the pregnancy survive that? Right. Right. But yet today in our beautiful abundance, those five foods are going to kill you. And they're, right. they're getting in the way of your thinness, which is how you're going to be accepted and proud of yourself. Right. So they make a ton of money demonizing food. But the whole thing is based on a, a, a process of body image survival, right? If you don't need to survive with a body image, what happens to the credibility of the food mongering cult that's inside of that? That's making trillions. The beauty image and oh, health, yeah, their credibility is dead. it's totally gone. In fact, you hear these five foods are making you fat. Do you even click on the link? No, because it's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. I know it is. Because, honestly, you could actually look at yourself in the mirror and what created this? Did the body do it to you? No. Did the specific food you ate do it to you? No. no. Did the belief in being thin as survival, did that do it to you? Yes. Yes, it did. Because it placed food as the enemy. And that's like saying God is my enemy. Because whatever the creator did to make us need food, that means that that was wrong. He shouldn't have done it. <laughs> because he believes that being thin is worthy of worship. And our health is like our main priority. Because whatever is created here, it can't do it on its own. We have to make it healthy. Because our body image is required to be accepted and lovable in society. Isn't it just gross to hear? Kind of gross. Uh -huh. 
Anyways, so do you really need to lose weight for that culture? Because that's truly what you're doing is you're saying, I want to be accepted into that cult. I want to be one of them. I want to be held up. I want to take a picture of myself and be like, look, I did it. I don't want followers. I don't want people to ask me, what did you do? You're so amazing. Look at you and your healthy body. How did you become so healthy? As if you now have access to that freedom of safety and survival because you're thin which you and I both know is a bunch of bullshit because you have to defend yourself from food for the rest of your life, which means you have to be obsessive compulsive about food, fearful about it. And now you have to defend yourself with exercise too, which means your whole life is dedicated in fear of gaining weight. Is that really access into this realm of safety? No. It's worse. It is worse. So I'm going to take us back to, so if you good right now, if you can look at your body and go, dude, I am freaking in luxury. And this is a literal view of luxury because I'm playing with the idea of being thin makes me valuable in society, which is such a first world problem. It's a game. What happens to the pressure on your food if you can just not care anymore? Goes away. And what happens to the need to binge today? There's, there's no reason for it. There's no need. Yeah, because food isn't going away. You're not going to get rid of it. You don't need to fix it. All the binging you did this week, the 10 pounds you gained, does it really need to get reason? Do you have to fix that to feel good about it? No. Well, if you do, that means your food is now the enemy. Right. Mm-hmm. So the goal here is that you let it resolve on its own accord because you don't have to do that. You don't even need to lose the weight to be safe. You've got enough. You're living luxury. We have so much abundance. You could travel the world. You could, again, buy years of food storage if you really wanted to feel safe. You could do, there's so much. You have so much. You live in a first world uh, luxurious environment and you don't have to lose weight. Your body can do it on its own. You don't have to do it to feel safe. So the key here is that you find that safety, that your hierarchy, hierarchy of needs are met right now. This second, during this conversation, you can go, I'm checking the boxes. I can't afford not to. <laughs> then I don't even enjoy this environment. I can't even enjoy it. Right? Yes. So now your hierarchy of needs are met. And how does it feel to know that you're safe and your family is safe and you live in abundance and you have all this freedom of creativity and exploration and you can, what happens to these feelings of all or nothing? They're not there. Okay. So I want you to think about that. Is all or nothing a personality trait you've had or is it a symptom? No, it's a symptom. Okay. What happens to the perfectionism? I have to be perfect. It has to be done perfect. It has to be done right. Yeah, that isn't, isn't uh, even part of the equation. So what happens to the idea that because you're perfectionist? Because perfectionism is needed because no, nothing's wrong. No, no, and you're not in survival anymore. Perfectionism is a symptom of survival. So is all or nothing. What happens to your anxiety over food today? Uh, I, don't have any, I don't have any anxiety over food today. Mm -hmm. What would you by choice subscribe to food mor morality? Um, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Would you by choice subscribe to food morality, food religion, meaning no. that's bad, you wouldn't no. do it? Absolutely not. Uh, but what about healthy no. food? Don't you have to eat healthy? I don't know. Healthy well, is like this. If I'm hungry, I'm going to eat it. Well, what not, that I'm means is that not. you're, you are lenient around, you're lenient around what that means. It's not, it's not all or nothing of one thing only, right? It means someday you right. might eat more fat or less fat. Some days you might need more carbs or less carbs that you're, you're not going to force health on the body out of some need to be healthy means the body's actually healthy right now. Actually, it's bionic because it's been able to sustain binging, literal mutilation, and it's sustaining your life. Isn't that a sign of health? Yes. Yeah, kind of bionic health because it's being mutilated yes. and sustaining health. 
sure. So does that, I mean, is it capable of eating, is it capable of health without you binging? Yes. I, I know, right? So we just take yeah. the destruction away and what happens to your overall health just by, just, just by relieving the need to be thin to survive? What happens to your health immediately? Well, my body's allowed to use what's going to you. Yeah, well, and you don't have the, your adrenals get to actually have a break. Right. Mm-hmm. Your thyroid doesn't have to be under attack anymore, does it? Yeah. All those organs that are meant to be used in fight or flight circumstances, they now get to have a break. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. What does that do for your overall health? Positive. Is that more healthy than the unhealth in the food? Which one's healthier? Healthy food or this relief of survival? Yeah, the release from survival because when you hear uh, that, does it kind of make you? Um, is it kind of funny to hear? It, makes, it is. I mean, it makes me a little irritated because it's it is it is a little bit like the Bible and putting body image as a survival and that includes health uh, image health the, image yes and the simplicity of what our body is supposed to be doing and that I am not I can't I shouldn't be telling the body how to do its job but I have that well that's because you decided that it needed to be that thin for you to survive Yes. Thin and healthy, right? Yes. So once you get rid of the thin and healthy belief system, all of a sudden you're allowed to look at the body as an amazing, it's amazing, right? It's done an incredible job. And if you don't have to focus on being healthy and you don't need to be healthy to survive, meaning you are surviving now, you remove all of that stress and fear of food. And is that more healthy than healthy food? Yes. Now. It's so, oh, yes, it, 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 like you being yeah. out of survival yeah. is far, far healthier for your health than healthy food that's deemed by the food moral religion. No matter how they tell you this is healthy food, it's far less healthy than you believing you are safe. Safety is where health exists. If you don't think you're safe and you think food is making you safe, you're in trouble in terms of bad food, good food, because you now have to be, you are being threatened by bad food, which makes you more susceptible to eating it out of survival, correct? Yes. So you could even argue that people who uh, promote clean eating versus dirty eating, it's very unhealthy for them to do that. It is, because you... <laughs> you just once again labeled it as moral or uh, yeah, you can't the, have that food's not good for you you can't right, enjoy right. you can't have that it's bad for you that right there makes you vulnerable to the hierarchy of needs with food it's now vulnerable it is no longer secure so you now obsess over those bad foods you can't have those bad foods when you eat those foods you feel bad about it it's like you, that ultimately is unhealthy. So by saying, okay, there is no morality in food. You don't have to lose weight. All of a sudden, all food becomes abundance, abundant. And what happens to these impulses to hoard food? There's many because it's abundant. Correct. And it's above and beyond abundant. It's not like abundant today. It's abundant to where you could actually store years and years and years of food today. You could stock enough yeah. food to last for years. So all of a sudden, this impulsiveness with food is just, it's gone. It's gone. And your susceptibility of stress is less. Now you have what you thought you were going to get with the thin body. You just already have it. You have it. You can be relaxed today. There's no pressure today. You can love your body today. You can actually love the hell out of it. Because it's done a miraculous job keeping you alive under siege. You've been attacking the body. 
as if it is your biggest enemy, which makes food your biggest enemy, which makes you susceptible to binging on food, which you think is the problem, which makes you susceptible to attacking your body. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. How do you feel? Uh, I feel, oh, I mean, it, it's, in a, in a way, it's overwhelming uh, because to think about that survival hierarchy and then to see where I've put my body image is, uh, I guess, overwhelming because it's so ridiculous. Um, but it, again, you know, makes me want to face it head on Good. because that's the only way that I can move past it is to yeah. say, uh, yes, this is, I am great and my, uh, the size and shape of my body doesn't have anything to do with any thing that is great or sucky in my life. It is completely unrelated. Mm hmm It is, isn't it? So and it's, that I can and losing weight isn't going to make a stress at work better. Right. Or thinking that I can make something that sucks better or make something that's awesome even more awesome by eating something <laughs> is, is just as, is just a ridiculous thought as well. Yeah, it is. So, so it makes me angry. It makes me want to uh, fight, but from a different a different way to fight and say, wait a minute, uh, you're trying to fight me, my brain, you know, trying to fight me with these thoughts that are ridiculous, and so I'm just gonna, you can, you can think that, and I'm just gonna choose to let you think that, and I'll just go and over here and think something else. Yeah, you know what you're negotiating with is the, the body image culture. That's what you're negotiating with is a huge amount of culture that actually thinks that being thin makes you more valuable and more acceptable. That's who you're, yeah. that's what you're negotiating with. Do you really oh, yeah. want the I'm, approval? I'm Do you want approval from that cult? Because it is a cult. Can you see that now? Yeah. Yeah, I, I do see that. And no, I don't, I don't. Um, I don't want, I don't want any, I mean, I don't want to be. So then what you do is you leave with the body you have right now and you say, I have, I, you can mock me all you want, throw your stones. Oh, I'm so unhealthy. That's fine. <laughs> White flag. I surrender. I surrender. I'm, I'm uh, filing bankruptcy. I'm done. You can have that thin body back. I have worked so hard. I've been an indentured servant to this belief system. So when do you file bankruptcy and leave it? Uh, I am. I'm planning on it being done already. Well, you need to process this in your own mind. I mean, I can sit here and present this to you. You can go, "Holy shit, this is clear as day. What's happened? I'm done." Mm -hmm. You need to process it to okay. where you accept the body fat that you have. You have to accept is safe. You have to get so as fat as I am. I'm so safe right now. And even if I lose weight, I don't care. I don't want it to be included in my safety. Thinness, fatness is not included in my safety. It's a game. It's not necessary in terms of safety and survival. It's a game. It's kind of like um, I'm, I am safe now, which makes doing my hair and putting makeup on fun. It's not needed. It's part of just living in luxury. Right. This cute little necklace that my, my children gave me is fun. It's luxury. I can wear it and enjoy it. I don't, if this isn't the end all be all of my, my, uh, survival is my jewelry, right? Well, so now you're not vulnerable to social worship. You're no longer worshiping all these false gods that aren't aligned with reality. You are living in it. You're a part of it, but it doesn't become your source of worship. Yeah, that is a, a good thought. Yeah, it helps. It helps because you don't have to define yourself by it. Or It's like, let your body heal on its own accord. Don't make it your problem. It's not a problem. Don't make it a problem. It's only a problem if you believe the people mocking the, the idealist with body image. They actually want to sell you their program. They want you to follow them. They want you to like them, right? Does that make sense? Okay. 
So if you if you argue with that, you're you're basically legitimizing it. All you need to do is walk out the door and never return and just be like, I don't even care if people judge me. I'm fine. If I care if they judge me, that means guess what that means? Food is a threat. That's what that means. You basically said your opinion is more important than food. And what happens to the power of food when that happens? It gets huge. Okay, I'm going to stop recording. Thanks for sharing this.